How's it going everybody? My name's Cal and today I've got yet another division video for you. Uh, so in today's video we're going to find out some more about what's coming in 1.7 and 1.8 with ETF Charlie member, the lovely binary kitten. We're going to cover commendations, cosmetics, bugs, the ETF itself, a little bit about 1.6.1, PvP and more. So make sure you stick around. After you've listened to everything that she's got to say, and if you did like this video, then please consider dropping it a like. And if you want to see more future division content on this channel, then please subscribe. With that said, that's about it from me, so let's jump right into the video. My name's Catherine, short to cat for most people, and I am a web developer by trade. And I've been playing The Division since the beta, uh, the closed beta. But many of you might also know me as uh, Binary Kitten and also Felis Benarius, who is wielding a sword in the Division game Twitch chat. So I, like loads of other people, applied to be in Elite Task Force Charlie, ETF Charlie, and I was like jumping and screaming and kind of hooting and nannying and everything else uh, when I got the email to say, welcome to Elite Force Charlie. So yes, I, I have been privy to certain bits. Yes, the NDA still applies for all those that wanted to know about whether it had been lifted or not. The thing is, is that the, word, the way that the NDA is, is that we can talk about things that have been released to you guys already and also like we can talk about the event itself uh, how we felt how we found it um, general thoughts and feelings I can give you my opinion on certain things as long as my opinion is stated as my opinion and not as fact so bear that in mind when you come to ask questions bullets question and I'll let you word it, word your answer how you want, uh, and take it where you can. I know you might not be able to answer it fully, but um, Massive has so far released the Global Event Classified Gear and Commendations Info. Can you tell us about the vanity item that also comes from the Global Event, and what is it? Uh, right, okay, so we've also been told about patches. So part of Commendations and uh, along that with Global Events is the patches. But they did say that there's going to be a specific vanity item that comes from global events. And that information is yet to be fully released. So I can confirm that the, it is not the same as patches. Um, but it's what it exactly is, I can't tell you. I mean, I hope it's something a little bit better personally speaking i hope it's something a little bit better than uh just a patch i hope it's something like very visual uh you know uh if you see me in the dz or you see me in a mission you can see it like clear and it's oh cal did that or that guy's done that uh, i think that'd be pretty cool things with the patch itself is yes it's only small on your uh, on on your actual uh, character model but that's the thing with it it's the same as like your backpack small but you can people can tell what backpack you're wearing and a lot of the bits and pieces yes it's going to be a, the patch is going to be small in and of itself um but you will be able to see it clearly like there will be bits and pieces of the ui updated to kind of show it to you as you as you're going around um it was one of the things that i fed back on as well um i noticed that there um, that you could see the patches of other people, but you couldn't see the patches of your team. And so I fed that back, and that was one of the feedback I gave part of that, uh, looking at those. I guess it's not, like, really bad. The, the thing that I always liken it to is destiny. You know, like, if you've done a raid and you, you've achieved a certain thing, that you get, uh, you know, a bit of raid gear. And that raid gear is, is, is so identifiable you can see somebody from you know across the map and you know sort of what gear that we're in i hope even if it's not this time i hope sort of in the future that we get to a point where the cosmetics and things like that are so distinguishable that you know if you run past someone on the dz or whatever it would be that you know that that, that guy or that girl has has gone and done that i think that'd be pretty cool 
So Semtex2199 says, in regards to bugs and balancing, have they said that they are dedicated to sorting it out? And I guess I'll tag on to the end of that question in terms of, do you know when, how soon, and to what degree are they going to sort the issues, that, especially the issues that sort of came with 1.6.1? A lot of the things that came with 1.6.1, they didn't weren't aware of, um, at least the community team uh, weren't aware of, which means that people didn't raise them in the prior PTS or the people didn't test it in the PTS. So that's one thing uh, to regard as thing. Um, the team themselves, they're always on the lookout for problems that they're trying to fix and they're always interested in trying to get those fixed because a lot of them, even though the whole lots of people in the community goes, don't they play this game? Surely if they play this game, they want they can fix it. It's like it's the same as going, you know how to drive a car, but just because you know how to drive a car and you drive a car every day, does that mean that you can and fix it instantly when something goes wrong? Do you usually take it to a, uh, someone who actually knows, etc. So with that, you've got a lot of feedback as well. So there's lots of um, reports, making sure that each report um, has inf actual more information or less information, filtering those down so they can actually find the actual cause of the problem itself. Because what we see is the symptoms of those bugs that we don't see what's actually causing them we only see how it's affecting us so trying to fix that is like going okay your head's like your hair's falling out so we're just going to like cover it with a wig rather than deal with any medical condition that might be causing it so um and all of those lovely things sorry cal uh, I, my brain just went straight to your avatar there <laughs> um but yes they are still dedicated to fixing bugs they hate the bugs as much as we hate the bugs i'm going to put this out there and i think i've said it to you uh, in person before uh, but i think it makes like a, a good talking point there's obviously a responsibility on massive to uh, fix bugs and check through bugs and basically go through what they're saying they're going to release as a patch so for example the 1.6.1 patch there was a huge list of, uh, of fixes that were that were supposed to be fixed and some of them were they weren't new bugs they weren't small bugs uh, granted that there was some bugs on 1.6.1 that were fixed um, but there's quite a lot that you know the community have been crying out for for a while so like you know things like the revive bugs and things like that that never well, they didn't essentially get fixed, and obviously they made it through the PTS, uh, so they, they made it through, and I wish you could see me now, but like, I'm doing air quotes, they made it through user testing, um, and then obviously they made it through the, uh, I guess the Q&A at, uh, at Massive. Can you explain the best you can, uh, and I'm not asking you to speak um, on Massive's behalf, but how do you think we got to the position that we are now where we're waiting for 1.7 to fix the majority of these bugs that were, again, fixed? Um, with 1.6.1. The thing with 161 is that um, some of the um, out of the list of hun over 100 bugs that they said they fixed, um, how many of them actually were not fixed or not fixed 100% or something else? In, in that case, I, I don't. I think out of say, if we say there was 100 of them, I think the percentage of that is less than 10. So less than 10% of the ones that they said they had fixed went unfi were unfixed as people were seeing them. Uh, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, I think so. I, 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 it's like I said, there, 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 there was a large list, uh, but I think most of the ones that stood out, and, and, and it's probably why they got so much attention for it, was you know bugs that we had either experienced before, um, that had been around a while, uh, that were frustrating, so they... The NPC grenades, the revive issues, you know, things that um, I wouldn't say they were game breaking. I'm not going to sensationalize it like a lot of people tend to do on Twitter uh, and in YouTube videos because I don't think they're that bad. I do think those ones, especially the the, the ones that should be fixed, you know, the, the part of the game, you, you've got a skill that is meant to revive people, you've got a signature skills that are meant to pick people up um, when they're down. Um, and it was those bugs that made it through that I was like, you know, how, how can this happen? Um, like I said, I, you know, I love the game and, and I'm sure everybody else in here loves the game, but uh, I thought it'd be a good talking point to sort of see if we could get a handle on why that is what it is. Yeah, so for, for my point of view, coming from my own development from other things, 
not in games, but like just the other day, we pushed two features completely independent of each other out to uh, a client site. And basically it meant that because these two features interacted with each other in a way that neither myself and the other developer had expected, it caused like uh, an, an issue that we weren't expecting. And the that's coming from like a very simple website. It, it's, I can only like to surmise that like the amount of different parts and pieces that are in uh, the division itself, you, you just the sheer number of moving pieces the game has to kind of process and juggle that fixing one bit can lead to conflicts in other parts and some of those would have been picked up and their Q&A would have picked up the biggest ones because that's the reason why the PTS gets changed each time. That's just the way that they are. Um, so I'd say that we can fix it and things like that, but there are inconsistencies with uh, everything. And as I say, it's, it's a difficult one because I know that the whole team um, that we spoke to, every single member from the Red Storm guys to the Reflections to uh, the representatives of Massive that were there, etc. Um, they all are passionate for the game and they hate that the, these bugs are going around and still around, uh, which is the reason that like Terry, when on the uh, state of the game last Thursday, was like, please help us by testing everything, test uh, doing things that you would not normally do because um, the, everybody's human and everybody looks at things from their own perspective. And as such, they are not always going to find those inconsistencies, those outliers. Um, but again, that's just from my personal opinion of, of the fact. But Yeah, yeah, no, I can appreciate that. And I, it was a tricky, tricky question to answer. I, I wasn't, hopefully, <laughs> you don't think I was trying to put you on the spot, but I think it's like a, I think it was a, a, a good question to sort of... Um, that's it. You're putting me on the spot. Understand. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> I think it's just you know good to sort of uh, let people because, like I said, you've spoken to me and you've given me a very similar answer before. Um, but I think it's good to let other people sort of understand um, why we got to where we got with uh, 1.6.1. So uh, there is a couple of questions that I'll run yep. into one or two gunnings in the in the channel. But um, just going off the back of what you said then about the console PTS, do you have any info that you can give us on the console PTS? It's coming. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Um, basically, the whole um, console PTS, etc. Uh, the main problems with it is not massive or Redstorm or Reflections or any of the Ubisoft side of it. Um, it is basically the first parties, Microsoft and Sony. They're the ones that are in control of how that gets distributed. Yeah. So pretty much, like the amount of hoops. Um, that they're going to have to jump through just to get the cons console PTS. The amount of hum humps they would have got to just to get Microsoft and Sony to sit at the same table and agree to have a console PTS. It's like just getting them to agree to doing it, that's a big win. That's a yeah. massive thing that no other company and no other video game has ever done. Yeah, absolutely. And as such, like, um, there's... People are theorizing that there's going to be limited um, kind of access. There's only going to be like certain invited people. And I can't say I disagree with that sum summarization. It's like there's the beta for um, uh, Sea of Thieves, which is running on side, uh, which has its own insider program. Mm -hmm. And from there, there's the free insider hub application which you install on your xbox one and then from there once you've signed up to various uh, insider programs if you've been accepted you kind of get those in and you can then uh, have access to install the insider builds of certain things including the xbox dashboard and the sea of thieves beta game which gets updated every week in the same way as the PTS uh, kind of would. The difference between kind of the PTS and the say, Sea of Thieves is literally Rare is a Microsoft Studio. So they've already had that inroad. So if it's possible for that, then it should be possible to kind of do something along the same lines. And whether that allows everybody access, 
everybody that's on Xbox, for example, to have access to that? I don't know. Okay. Um, and we shall hopefully find that out soon. And and soon as they've got that information, they're going to share it with us. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, a Slack uh, musician, my longtime gaming buddy, he's got a, a good question that I think I posed when we went to the ETF meetup. Um, is there any feel or love for the underground coming in the update, upcoming updates? Um, we definitely spoke about underground and also survival, um, just in case anybody's wondering about that. So we did speak about those particular DLCs, etc., and like how people felt about them, what we felt we could improve upon them, and uh, various different ideas were coming through. And some of the bits and pieces that had been fed to us from various different community members definitely made their way through to it. So we, we brought up people's concerns, we brought up like people's suggestions, uh, and we had a, a, a good discussion about, uh, about it. As for how many of those are going to end up as changes and what kind of uh, updates are going to be, there's definitely not going to be any in 1.7 other than certain aspects may be covered. Like, for example, um, I'm not sure if global events covers underground. Um, but it may do. It's definitely, the global events definitely won't cover um, survival and definitely won't cover Last Stand. They, they may cover uh, Underground, I'm not sure on that one. As for the other bits, there's generally small little uh, bits and pieces and uh, bug fixes, etc. The 1.7 is not just the new p three pieces of content that you've seen, there's more content than that. Um, and also there's of course, they're going to be trying to put a load of uh, put a load of bug fixes in as well as many as they can get in. So, they 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 are feeling the love for it, um, especially reflections because reflections were the leads on underground, um, and as such, they love it and they really want to keep it alive and thriving. Uh, and in terms of any. Um, new guns um, or new uh, exotics. Can you give us any info on that? Even if it's uh, yes, there's some coming, or uh, yes, there's three coming, or whatever, it, whatever, whatever it might be. We talked about the the loot and loot tables and other bits and pieces, and we talked about um, the main piece of loot that's coming up, which is the uh, classified gear. Um, as for exotics and new exotics, there's still there's still talk about it. Like I know Hamish still wants his uh, bolt action sniper rifle, and I, I I want my taser gun. I I really want something that fires taser bullets, but uh, I don't think I'm going to get that at all. There wasn't anything that I can say will definitely be included. They um, it's one of those that they're still going to be reworking. They're still looking to see what they can add. But again, if people wanted to say trade up on some of the content that's going to come in 1.8 for um, a couple of new exotic weapons and a, maybe a, another piece of exotic gear, for example, I think that would be a very bad trade up. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree absolutely. So that was uh, that question was from the hunter or the hunted. Is there any information around commendation and patches and, and uh, the trophies and achievements that sort of has been released but people haven't hooked onto yet? You know, if there's a, they've mentioned something or something's been in a, that you know there's been on a, either a screenshot or on one of the streams that you think is, is interesting to, uh, I guess, get out there uh, that we don't know yet? Well, there's at the moment there's going to be like, a, a, like two or three different types of commendation. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be the achievement slash trophy style ones, which are going to be tied to you play, Xbox achievements and PlayStation trophies. So those ones, um, like when you've completed those, um, like I'm still trying to get my rogue kills because like I'm not very good at dealing damage. So like literally someone will get in there and kill them before I get the kill and you have to get the kill shot for it to count. So all of those will be... Uh, will get you accommodation points and accommodation score. So there's also ones where doing certain actions a certain amount of time uh, or collecting a certain amount of things, kind of like a statistic build-up ones, those ones are going to be in there. Um, and then there's going to be like stuff that is going to be genuinely difficult. One of the ones that got shown was uh, flawless 
kind of uh, legendaries and that is doing like one you kind of get one set of points for doing each of the uh, legendaries flawlessly that's no downs that's not deaths it's no spawns it's downs right. so nobody gets downed during a whole legendary mission and then you get that commendation for the whole team will um, and then there is one for all of them so you get all the flawless and you then get the larger one hunter or hunted was asking about like why are the patches uh, so, so, so <laughs> why patches are, so, aren't they sort of pointless basically accommodation patches they are a nice thing to have on top of the um kind of things that we're already doing in game so rather than like just doing these things and getting nothing for nothing to show off for it um they kind of put they've got these patches so that they're nice they're, they're they're cosmetic they are pretty useless as a kind of anything else because they're not a stat item anything that's not a stat item can be pretty useless yeah um but if like for example there are going to be some commendations which some people will get really early and some that they'll have to really grind for. Mm -hmm. um, and as such, like seeing their patch, they can show off the one that they're most proud of. Yep. Okay. And that's kind of the point for me. It's like, one, you've got the commendations, you've got the commendation score that just shows how long they've been playing it. And the commendation score, of course, is across the whole account, not just for a single character, as are the patches. Yeah. Um, and it basically just is a way of uh, bragging rights and everybody loves the bragging rights okay uh slack's got another um i think it's a brilliant question and a bullet just below it says it's a it's a good question too so uh, during the etf did everybody get the different points across uh eg not the not just those who shouted the loudest uh and how well managed with the overall experience there's, i guess there's two questions there but uh the experience was daunting is the word i would use it's like quite a few of us went in kind of um we're saying like ah oh, they're going on vacation now it's so oh, massive having vacation going to etf and it's like it, it to put it bluntly it's like doing eight days worth of work in four days so on each morning we left the hotel at eight o'clock in the morning um we were in the office before nine we had sat down dead on nine we were kicking off and we went all the way through to like at least seven o'clock at the end of the day we probably would have gone longer but our security passes were only valid until then so we had to leave at 7 p.m even then even though that was the end of the official day we then like all went to kind of me we were still trying to keep talking and everything else and we went to the the hardest part of it uh, was going to the meet and greet and like not just like infusing everybody and and not kind of talking to everybody and let giving them all the information it's just like we wanted to like spill our guts we wanted to like like take a knife and just go <laughs> everywhere and kind of share everything that we had picked up on because like literally i think i hyperbolized that um and said that to teenage mutant ninja scrubs and a couple of other people that i was more excited for year two content than i was for destiny 2 and that's just based on the pieces of information that would be given on both sides of the wheel so it's like i'm i played destiny till i was blue in the face i played destiny before, well all my friends kind of gave it up and I played Division the same kind of manner. Of this, uh, so it's like both of those are kind of kind of my mainstays and those things I've been playing quite a lot. So it's like I know that I'm excited for Destiny 2, some of them, the way that that's going to turn out, etc. And I'm slightly more excited for just the content that we've got because of the way that it's going to change things up. Um, and, and I guess, and I just want to sort of go back to um, a specific part of Slack's question where he said, um, did everyone get their different points across, not just those who shouted the latest? Definitely. We, there was um, everybody that was there pretty much. There were some bits where uh, we all got very excited and we had to be calmed down quite a lot 
generally whenever it like whenever Keith came along with uh, like a solution to something or came up with an idea for something and we all kind of were like oh my god oh my god and uh, like but generally we it was all based out of respect so we all kind of gave like our opinions on certain things and we all talked talked through it discussed between the, some of it sometimes we had differences of opinions and yeah like i sometimes thought some of the things that people were saying were completely stupid but that's just the way that we had to deal with it is like so we had to process that and be respectful and pretty much yannick who was basically running it um for the most part because um hamish etc was uh, delayed due to for a couple of reasons he wasn't there till the wednesday so the whole team kind of revolved around and ran their separate parts and then kind of we were sorted out and everything else in regards to certain aspects like for the organizational and uh, managed etc we kind of were for different sections we were split into different groups so like one one group would be going and play testing certain things and the other ones would be having a discussion on say the classified gear mm -hmm. and then we would switch over so that we could have the different bits and then another section we would split into two different groups again so that way we're still two groups but different mix up of people and play all that but yeah going back to the ETF, was there a even uh, representation of both PvE players and PvP players? Or at the very least, viewpoints on, on both PvE and PvP? Because I know a lot of people in the past have said, you know, PvP players are ruining this game. You know, I, I, again, I wish you could see them because that's in quotes, but um, <laughs> any color, you know, the, the PvE people, uh, sorry, the PV, yeah, the PvP people are saying, you know, PvE uh, is affecting what goes on in PvP. Um, was it was was there a, a good balance of opinions and input from both those camps in the ETF? Pretty much um, to the fact that hardly any of us actually focused on any of those bits because in the end we were all people who played the game um, and we all kind of had our certain areas that we enjoyed more than others mm -hmm. but we all had valid inputs on all of the content yeah basically this there was a broad brush i know i'm not a big pvp -er, but there was like people like uh binary numb who many people can uh, get me confused with mm -hmm. uh, i've even been accused of being his wife at one point uh mm -hmm. so but uh, yeah the, he's had a lot more experience with pvp um but we've all played pvp to an aspect and we all either like it or dislike it for different reasons and that's yeah. uh, and as such all of those were taken into consideration yeah cool i mean i think that with the, the pvp thing i think i mean i love it but i also sort of hate it at the same time uh, there's, you know there's nights where you can have a good night and then there's uh, nights where you come up against a, you know a team who are just blatantly they're doing anything that they can to take advantage of issues within the game to better their experience but it just makes it like a, a bad, bad experience for overall and i just hoped i know that, that was slack's question but I, I, from from a, a pvp players uh, point of view i hope that um, those core gameplay mechanics are either addressed in 1.7 or 1.8 because i think it'd be a shame if they went sort of unchecked until the death of the division um so slack had another good question um and to be honest, I want to know the answer to this as well. So he says, on classified gear, it's a bit unfair that you have to have six pieces to activate the five and six talents. Do you know if this is set in stone right now? And if so, um, how are they going to test that on the PTS you know, in terms of loot drops? Are they going to give us uh, you know, a, a full set and things like that? Because um, otherwise, we're, we, you know, we're, if these things have to wait for uh, client fixes once they get out there in the wild, um, you know, they, we're potentially going to have a lot of... Uh, uh, broken uh, gear sets. So I will also tag team uh, Five Pets uh, question in there as well because it ca covers the same thing. So unfortunately, the classy gear uh, was only in a kind of concept stage. So they worked on the main bits and pieces, but they hadn't had a, a, a version that we could play because um, that was that was kind of a bit 
complicated for for the time available to get it done before then so of course they needed to have a, a fully working version before they brought it to us and one of the things that we discussed was like how those talents and um, could work etc and the five and six and discussion points on those so with regards to whether it's unfair to have uh, the six pieces to activate it's the five and six etc I don't think it is unfair. Um, the whole point with it is that um, if they, they need to be special, if they're not special, then why not just put five and six talents on the existing gear mm -hmm. and just make it so that you can then put five and six. It, without making it special, without making it unique, there's, there's literally no point for us to go for it. Yep. And the the whole thing with that five and six talents is that you have to collect all of them so but the upside is that they're not in loot drops so the during the global events you'll get global event tokens and with those tokens you'll get classified gear caches yeah and uh, and those gear caches will give you the items so you do more events you get more tokens you do you get more caches so you're kind of guaranteed to kind of get those bits and pieces we had a discussion um about the best way for that as well and again we've been told that there's going to be classified gear caches but we haven't been shown the full vendor and we haven't been shown exactly how that's going to uh, work yet as such that should come out on the PTS and we should be able to see a variant of that. And of course, during the PTS, if that's not working properly and that's not kind of, people are not getting it well and it's not kind of feeling correct, then they can go ahead and change small aspects of it. They, they've got kind of a couple of plans that they want. They've gone with their uh, alpha plan um, and they're, they're the one that they, they kind of feel is the best. Um, but if they're, it's not working out quite right, then they can always like fall back to some variants, etc. And with the PTS, we're going to get a lot more of the loot. So we're going to be able to test like the different gear sets anyway. So we can test that five and six talent if we wish to. Yeah. So um, potentially like they did with the, uh, I think it was the 1.4 PTS, where they just gave us f essentially free caches at one of the vendors. And it was like, okay, well, go and get this. You know, Get your gear or however you need it test it and then move on to the next uh pretty much that's kind of one of the plans okay. um and also that they still work as the standard gear sets as well is the bonus for them as well so for example you can have um you get your first piece of classified gear um i and um if i get a piece of classified nomad i can like switch that into and replace one of my nomad pieces with that and it still has the same uh four piece talent but only so, the four piece right you still need all six pieces to be classified to take advantage of the five and six talents yes um so it just means that up to that point you can build you can slowly build the four set Mm -hmm. uh, while replacing your existing one without having to kind of drop everything and uh, build it fresh. Yeah, um, essentially to avoid you having it sat in your stash for you know weeks on end while you're grinding for those extra pieces. Yeah, and also you can if you've already got a gear set, you're already wanting to run that, then switching out a piece with slightly better stats, etc., and everything else. So hopefully so, that answers the question. Yeah, no, I think it does. Uh, I think it probably went a little bit further as well, which is cool. So thank you. Um, Five Fet also has another question. Did you get to play the global events uh, at the PTS and sorry at the ETF? And if so, uh, what were your thoughts on them? Uh, I love the. F uh, I have to pronounce this pr uh, correctly. Thwips Fluge. Right. <laughs> the uh, it's my pronunciation of the thwip for the headshot and the spluge that comes from it. Um, the animations, etc., for that particular global event were different, and they were a lot more rough. But the the sounds and everything for them uh, were good. So mm -hmm. we managed to get to play that. We played it both uh, solo. Mm -hmm. uh, we played it like 
with a team uh, going into an, uh, into an activity, using the activity modifier and using the team modifier as well. We had a play with all of those as well. Um, another question from Slack, and then I think we'll, uh, unless anybody's got any burning questions, and if you have, let us know in question time. Um, he says, with the introduction of classified gear, uh, do you know if high-end high gear is getting any love, e.g. buff reckless, or are we going to get rid of uh, or give some love to the, the useless gear? Because you know, the majority of the, the high-end gear is way, way too situational or um, just pure pointless. You know, do you know if high-end gear is getting any love? It is not for 1.7 as far as I'm aware, but I know that uh, both Keith and Terry wanted to kind of give them some love for 1.8. Whether that will get in there is is down to them, and that will kind of come out as it was. Um, so, um, but yes, there, there's nothing in set in stone that they're not going to do at this time, um, as far as I can say. Yeah, a comment by Drax. Will be change any changes to the rogue mechanics? Basically, we managed to play a very early alpha version of different rogue mechanics for 1.8. I've had a little time to uh, kind of ruminate, uh, kind of uh, get the taste of it. Um, so kind of was a, a good change. And some of the bits and pieces are, um, that they kind of explained, like, they're looking to do felt really really good and positive as for like what is it i can't really say exactly okay. um but the it does it does make a good change to how rogues work for me it, it may need more tweaking before it got to it but it was really really early alpha to the point where um the alpha wouldn't work with the local uh, testing infrastructure. And as such, they had to make a couple of changes to kind of get that alpha build to run on the across the machines. So that's like how early it was. Um, okay. But yeah, that's another one of Keith's and Terry's brainchilds. And they kind of, it's going to work. They are pretty much the people that are dealt with PVP for a lot of things. And all of the positive PvP aspects that have come out recently have been down to, I would say, I would put it more in Red Storm's kind of way. They they really have your back if you're a PvP. -er. Okay. Uh, and when we're talking about the, the rogue mechanics, we're, we're talking about like accidental roguing and things like that and the timers. Yeah. And, and, and Is there anything, um, I guess it goes back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, is there anything that you can let us know about... Um, Movement. So, for example, uh, I think in the last was it the last BTS or maybe the one before they uh, they changed it so you couldn't reload uh, while running, and I thought that was a really positive thing. And obviously, there was a big outcry about it, and Massive said they didn't feel like they'd imp implemented it correctly. I thought it was great, to be honest. But is there is there anything that you can let us know about um, uh, you know movement and uh, the, the way that the the players are going to go to end up interacting in a a roguing situation? Part of that's going to be changed, yes. So there's there's definitely improvements to manhunting. Um, so Terry and Keith basically definitely wanted to have less, oh, just run it off, run it off. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to have some part, some real reason um, to go want to go rogue rather than just for the shit and giggles of it. Yeah. Um, and they wanted some actual, like, thing to happen and they wanted it, it to be more kind of interactive rather than just kind of be passive because at the moment the the most active pvp is last stand when it i mean not active as in the amount of players playing it but active as in the amount of things that you do during that so like uh, if you run into the dark zone it's kind of like you can either shoot people or cut the rope so there could be potentially um, more I, things like that, uh, more um, more mechanics that would be more roguelike in the future, shall we say? Yeah, and there could be things that you're doing while you're doing it. The Dark Zone still has its place. Um, the The most common thing is that um, there's been a large outcry for pe by people saying, "Ah, oh, give us a PVE Dark Zone. Give us a, no, a, a no, thing no. where we'd think." I'm, I'm just going to go through it. It's like um, 
removing i was one of those people that kind of entertained the idea of having a pve dark zone um for me personally i'd love to see actual pve missions actual missions themselves where you have to go into the dark zone and basically creates an instance that you run into and you do like an actual mission uh like kind of like half survival, survival. Stuff. yeah yeah but not kind of with all the survival mechanics where yeah. like you go as a group of four you go in you have to go in like uh find this di particular piece of uh div tech that that was my concept because then it's like you're not it's not a PVE dark zone but you get the PVE uh, bits you actually run in and get those bits and pieces that you want to do so those are the things that were that I was making the suggestion for but again that's not detracting from it so the biggest thing that most people are complaining about that I've seen is that if you do this then it's going to take away this and it's like oh if you're buffing this that means you're nerfing something else yeah. and that's not how the whole thing works it's yeah. like so the one major concept that they wanted to get across and the major thing they do is that they want to bring more people to the dark zone they want yeah. to make more people enjoy that environment yeah. So that was one of the questions that they asked us is like, for those of us that don't go into the dark zone on a daily basis or uh, and don't go in there often, what about it makes it uncomfortable for us or makes it so that we don't want to do it? Yeah. And for us, like for me, it's the gang squads. It's the people that stand around out there and they basically just like hunt you down for shits and giggles or they just basically don't give you a, any fighting chance even mm. if you've not even got a fighting chance still would like to feel like it you've got one yeah so so like the introduction of course of um the fast travel between um the checkpoints check yeah has helped no end with that yeah so like i'm more willing to go into the dark zone now myself yeah um, the thing is, it's, it's it's a very tricky balance, and I, and I, and I don't envy Massive for, for with the position that they're currently in because there is that that side of things, like you say, where people are just looking to to grief, and I guess you get that in a lot of um, uh, RPG type games where there's a PvP environment, but without that um, that element of risk, without that, uh, that 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 chance that you might come across somebody who's going to shoot you in the back. The dark zone really wouldn't be what it is, uh, like at all. You wouldn't have that sense of anticipation, like, oh my god, I've got this. I need to get this extracted now. It'd just be, all right, cool. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll film it. I agreed. And then, like and when I got something. my two five six Midas, um, I got a two five six Midas from a rogue that I killed, <laughs> um, and I basically got it extracted. I was like, just that one thing was all I wanted. Yeah. And like during the early. Uh, time about i'd say about this time last year i managed to get my last midas which was a 182 midas yeah. um and that was in the dark zone and literally um that was when loot was not as prevalent as it is now so dr having that drop and that thing so for me that's another aspect on it is that loot at the moment is too prevalent yes um as such like because we get so much of it it's less special when we get something more unique. Yeah. So it's like make it so that the chance of a drop for me, like this, we're going off topic onto the there onto a different part of it, but it's like if we dropped the percentage chance of a drop, so that it's so drops happen less often, but then while doing that up the percentage chance of when a drop happens of getting something good. Mm -hmm would make that a lot better. Yeah, I think I'd be happy with that. You know, I think everybody else would be. The, the, the issue that we had, uh, and I think the, the huge amount of loot that we get now is because the the stat ranges that we can get in gear is you know, huge. Uh, and only, if, say for example, if you were trying to min-max a, a sentry build, which I used to do, having to go into Falcon Lost on a weekly basis to grind that to then get something that was disappointing and had to wait till the week after that was a huge pain um so having as much loot now because they haven't really changed the stat ranges that we can get is that's that happy medium but i think if we can get to a point where maybe it's less drops but those like you said those drops are of a higher quality um, i think that would be it would give that that special feeling when something does drop it's like oh it's a gold and it's a it's a gear set or 
Okay, um, the so our Five's Fet, uh, this will be the last uh, question. Um, so Five okay. says, um, was there any talk about how your stamina should be changed? At the ETF, there wasn't, mainly because there we talked about a load of other things. So the time to be killed and the time to kill was kind of discussed, but not stamina specifically. Yeah. So yeah, there there was just so much other things that we wanted to, that we were testing and talking about and discussing that that in its uh, specificity uh, wasn't.